Hey guys, so we are here at Lexington Battle Green. Uh, this is where it all began. This is where the American Revolution officially started. And I'm hoping that uh, this is a little different than what I usually do, but I'm hoping you enjoy this, uh, especially those who don't live here in Massachusetts. We kind of take this for granted being so close to this, but uh, I hope to bring you some of the sights here uh, while the rain holds off. So in mid-April of 1775, Thomas Gage, who was the commander of the British troops in Boston, uh, got word that the uh, colonial militia had uh, stored a cache of weapons and ammunition in Concord. Now, it's Concord, not Concord, for those who don't do the Massachusetts accent. And Concord is literally right down the road, and we're going to go there after we show you this here, because uh, this is where it started. So after uh, Thomas Gage got word that the militia was storing arms, he ordered his troops to go to Concord and to seize and destroy that cache. Shortly after that, Paul Revere, who was involved in the Sons of Liberty, who was uh, you know, involved in the ring of spies that the uh, colonists had at that time. Uh, he got word that this was happening and uh, he coordinated with a friend who would go into the steeple of the Old North Church and hang uh, lanterns based on what the troops were doing at the time, the British troops. You've all heard the phrase, one if by land, two if by sea, and that's what, it was gonna, that's what they were going to do. They would hang one lantern in the church steeple if the troops were going to march by land, and two if the British troops were going to move by sea. So when the colonists saw that the uh, British troops were loading into boats, uh, you know, 800 of King George's best troops, uh, the uh, two lanterns were hung in the steeple of the Old North Church, and Paul Revere saw the signal. He then immediately took off on his famous midnight ride, with William Dawes in an attempt to warn the locals that the British were coming. Uh, he actually, actually didn't say the British were coming, he actually said the regulars are out. So Paul Revere came right through this area here, and as a result, 77 uh, Minutemen, which were local colonists, that volunteered to be first responders uh, to military or other threats, they amassed here on this green in an attempt to stop the advancement of the British troops to stop them from going to Concord. In the early morning hours of April 19th, 1775, the uh, British troops arrived here and the colonists, the Minutemen, the militia stood their ground. The British troops then took to a battle formation and ordered the militia to drop their arms. And the, uh, the colonists stood firm. It got very tense as you could imagine. Now somebody, and nobody really knows exactly who, but somehow a shot was fired whether somebody was anxious or or nervous or what but that went down in history as the shot heard around the world and the british troops responded by uh, firing upon the minutemen now the militia did fire back in all eight minutemen lost their lives and 10 others were wounded two british soldiers were also injured and after this battle samuel adams exclaimed to john hancock what a glorious morning for america now this monument here, as you can see, I'll try to hold it still while I read it for you. It says, the remains of those who fell in the Battle of Lexington were brought here from the old cemetery on April 20th, 1835, and buried within the railing in front of this monument. This is about as historic as it gets, guys. It's actually pretty emotional being here to know that our fellow countrymen, our forefathers, laid down their lives for something that they believed in. I'll show you the monument here. You can see here it says executed by the park. And as we go up, I'll try to zoom a little for you and read it. And it says, sacred to liberty and the rights of mankind, the freedom and independence of America sealed and defended with the blood of her sons 
This monument is erected by the inhabitants of Lexington under the patronage and at the expense of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts to the memory of their fellow citizens. Ensign Robert Monroe, Jonas Parker, Samuel Hadley, Jonathan Harrington, Isaac Muzzy, Caleb Harrington, and John Brown of Lexington, and Ashel Porter of Woburn, who fell on this field, the first victims to the sword of British tyranny and oppression. On the morning of the ever memorable 19th of April, 1775, the die was cast, the blood of these martyrs in the cause of God and their country was the cement of the union of these states, then colonies, and gave the spring to the spirit, firmness and resolution of their fellow citizens. They rose as one man to revenge their brethren's blood and at the point of the sword to assert and defend their native rights. They nobly dared to be free. The contest was long, bloody and affecting. Righteous heaven approved the solemn appeal. Victory crowned their arms and the peace, liberty and independence of the United States of America was their glorious reward. And this was built in the year 1799. So I'm gonna walk around it now and try to uh, give you an opportunity to take it all in. Like these, uh, the militiamen who died here to stop the advance of the British troops are buried right here within this gate, within this iron fence. I just wanted you all to have a chance to take this in. This is the entire battlefield. Lexington Battle Green, it is now Lexington Common. And this is where it all started. So here we have another monument here at the Lexington Battle Green. And uh, this boulder, as you can see, has a musket and a, uh, a powder horn on it. And it says, Line of the Minutemen, April 19th, 1775. Stand your ground. Don't fire unless fired upon. But if they mean to have a war, let it begin here. And those are the words of Captain Parker. Now here's another uh, monument that's right across the street from Lexington Battle Green, and this is the start of the uh, Battle Road. It's a five mile stretch between here and uh, the old North Bridge where we're gonna go next. On the very bottom it says, these men gave everything dear in life, yea, and life itself in support of the common cause. And here is a monument that is just in front of Buckman Tavern, which I'll show you here in a second. It says, in honor of Prince Estabrook. Prince Estabrook was a slave who lived in Lexington. At dawn on April 19, 1775, he was one of the Lexington Minutemen awaiting the arrival of the British regulars at the Buckman Tavern. In the battle which followed, Prince Estabrook was wounded on Lexington Green. Through circumstance and destiny, he thus became the first black soldier to fight in the American Revolution. This monument is dedicated to the memory of Prince Estabrook and the thousands of other courageous black patriots long deny the recognition they deserve. This is Buckman Tavern. This was the gathering place of the Lexington militia, the same militia that crossed the street to the green to stop the British advance on Concord. This is the Lexington Minuteman statue. This was erected in 1900 and it depicts militia captain John Parker. I just think it's absolutely beautiful. I want to uh, draw your attention to the flag that is flying here on Lexington Battle Green. Uh, interestingly, 
enough, this flag, well, this location, Lexington Green, is one of the very few places in the United States where the U.S. flag is flown by an act of Congress, and it's required to be flown 24 hours a day. So here we have the location where Paul Revere was captured. A lot of people know about the ride, but they didn't know that Paul was actually captured. They were, they, the British troops, were intent on carrying out the orders to continue down this battle road here uh, to Concord in uh, the attempt to carry out the orders to catch and destroy the uh, cache of weapons and ammunition. At this point, on this old Concord road, as it then was, ended the midnight ride of Paul Revere. He had, at about 2 o'clock in the morning of April 19th, 1775, the night being clear and the moon in its third quarter, caught this far on his way from Lexington to Concord, alarming the inhabitants as he went, when he and his companions, William Dawes of Boston and Dr. Samuel Prescott of Concord, were suddenly halted by a British patrol who had stationed themselves at this bend of the road. Dawes, turning back, made his escape. Prescott, clearing the stone wall and following the path known to him through the low ground, regained the highway at a point further on and gave the alarm at Concord. Revere tried to reach the neighboring wood, but was intercepted by a party of officers accompanying the patrol, detained and kept in arrest. Presently, he was carried by the patrol back to Lexington. There released, and that morning joined Hancock and Adams. Three men of Lexington, Sanderson, Brown, and Loring stopped at the earlier hour of the night by the same patrol were also taken back with Revere. And here they have a plaque about the Midnight Riders. You can see it says one if by land and two if by sea. And I on the opposite shore will be ready to ride and spread the alarm through every Middlesex village and farm for the country folk to be up and to arm. And that was Henry Wadsworth Longfellow's poem, Paul Revere's Ride, in 1861. And here you have the Midnight Riders. It says in September of 1774, Patriot leaders initiated a system of alarms and express riders to warn area towns whenever British troops marched out of Boston. On April 18, 1775, at about 10 in the evening, two riders set out from Boston ahead of 700 British troops. They took different routes in case the British stopped one of them. William Dawes took the southern route out of Boston and Paul Revere took the northern route. They stopped in Lexington to warn Patriot leaders John Hancock and Samuel Adams and headed on to Concord, where military supplies for the colony were stored. And here is the plaque commemorating Paul Revere's capture. It says, along this stretch of the battle road, the famous midnight ride of Paul Revere came to an end. While passing through Lexington at around midnight, Paul Revere and William Dawes met Dr. Samuel Prescott of Concord, who was riding home after courting Lydia Mulkin. Prescott agreed to help spread the alarm that the regulars were out. The three men ran into a patrol of 10 mounted British officers posted near here to prevent word of the British march from reaching Concord. Revere was captured. Dawes escaped back towards Lexington, and Prescott jumped his horse over a stone wall and eluded the British soldiers. So what you guys are looking at right now is the Old North Bridge. This is where the Battle of Concord took place. That's the bridge that the militia needed to get over to cross that bridge in order to help fortify Concord. And this is where the British troops were waiting this is where the British troops told them to stop. And this is where the battle took place. So here we go over the old North Bridge. I 
The monument says here on the 19th of April, 1775, was made the first forcible resistance to British aggression. On the opposite bank stood the American militia. Here stood the invading army, and on this spot, the first of the enemy fell in the War of the Revolution, which gave independence to these United States. In gratitude to God and in the love of freedom, this monument was created, 1886. Here's the grave of British soldiers. It says they came 3,000 miles and died to keep the past upon its throne. Unheard, beyond the ocean tide, their English mother made her moan. April 19th, 1775. So this is the spot where it all happened. Battle of Concord. This is the side that the British were on. That's where the militia were coming when they left the battle that took place on Lexington Green. It's about uh, five miles as they march. Uh, they left uh, the Lexington area about 5.30 in the morning. This battle was at 9.30 a.m. This is where the British troops encountered 400 American militia. The British retreated from here and started the 18 mile march back to Boston. And along the way, uh, more countrymen on our side, more militia, would shoot at them from behind uh, trees, behind houses, behind stone walls. And uh, as they put it, the rest is history. So guys, let me know uh, what you thought about today. We started out uh, at Lexington Battle Green where the militia tried to stop the uh, oncoming troops after they were alerted by Paul Revere. We saw Paul Revere's, uh, the location where he was captured and now the uh, Battle of Concord. Hopefully I did it justice. Uh, let me know what you think. And uh, if you wanna see more of the spots here, especially on Battle Road, let me know and we'll see what we can do. All right guys, kind of a sobering experience. Until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a weapon, just like they did.